So when I surveyed it, there was 22 mil just there. I thought, happy days, that's all running 22 mil. But when I've took the casing off and all the boxing that was above it, it's 15 mil. It's a 30 kilowatt boiler. I can't run that off 15 mil. If you remember a few weeks back, I was working on the property, done quite a bit of work there, new pump, new diverter, some new radiators. Got the system working pretty well. It was on a one pipe system. Customer turned around at the end of the job and says, we want to update to a combi. So we're back there, we'll be taking out the cylinder, the boiler, and converting to a combi, and converting the one pipe, or am we? We had a few problems on this one. You'll see why in a minute, and you'll see how we overcome them. So we've got a 2K giveaway, I decided on that. That is going to be the We're At Advent Calendar. It's nearly Christmas, why not? Let's give someone a chance to win the We're At Advent Calendar. So, you want to win that, make sure you've subscribed and commented on this post. And what I'll do, I'll put it, the comments through a random name generator and pick a winner in a couple of weeks. So yeah, We're At Advent Calendar, subscribe, comment, like the post. Yeah, let's get straight into this one. So, oh, if you remember, this is the Worcester Boiler. This is on the one pipe system. So this is coming out and we're going to have a backseat 830, the two version, the new version going in there. So there was a kitchen cupboard around here. We took it off. I'm going to have the kitchen redone. So then what the boiler doing. So they're switching to a main system. So yeah, I'm going to start ripping that out. And we've got the tanks upstairs as well. So if you don't remember, this is the system. So it's got cylinder, tanks. These are more coming out. The lot's coming out. Um, so we've got to reconfigure the shell pump over here. Because obviously going to a main pressure system, that pump can be got rid of. Reconfigure the pipe work, link the flow. Thankfully, it's a lot cooler because every time I've been to this house, it's been middle of summer, red hot. It's a lot cooler today. It's like the start of October, so big cooler, nice working conditions. Got three days on this because uh, we're going to see if we can re pipe the two radiators. I'm still on the one pipe, see if we can get them working a bit better because I'm still a little bit slow. Drain the cylinder, there is a drain off around the other side, but it looks dodgy as anything, so that's the feed. You've got a 1522 adapter onto there. And Chris is going to bend that and I'm going to put that in the bath to drain it down. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to tell you the joke Chris just said. So, I'm just going to bend it down very gently. There we go. And that should be draining down there. Going into the toilet. Angle that a bit better. There we go. Start drying this with nice and quick. We've already got the header tank out and the coal feed tank. And Chris is just going to be ripping out the rest of that. We have got to have a look at the one pipe in these bedrooms because this radiator, the radiator next door, is still on a one pipe. So, what I'm going to do is get the cylinder out, put the sheet down. So, get the cylinder out, get that out of the way, have a look on the landing, see where the feeds are, see how these two are fed. Obviously, see how the rest of the system is fed because it's a mixture of one pipe and two pipe. Hopefully, this will work. See what we got under the trap door. No sign of flowing turnpipes coming from the loft. We just got this pipe here, which goes to over there somewhere, and this one here, which goes over there. Okay, so we've got it all up, and the one pipe comes this way to underneath there to the bathroom, which is a wet room. So there ain't nothing we can do about this one pipe system. Yeah, it's good to convert this to a two pipe without ripping the house apart. Spoke to the customer, they said when they have the bathroom done, we can get back in and convert it to a two pipe. But we've just been looking at the gas one for the boiler. Have a look at this. So when I surveyed it, there was 22 mil just there. I thought, happy days, that's all running 22 mil. But when I've took the casing off and all the boxing that was above it, it's 15 mil. 30 kilowatt boiler, I can't run that off 15 mil. So it's a new gas one. Right. But the gas one is a pain. On the boiler there, if you walk around here, this is the passage right. That is all a flat roof. All flat roof. As we go into the garage where the gas meter is. There. So the only way to get a gas one into the house, this is the bedroom above but they've just had all fitted wardrobes. So we can't go through there into that bedroom and across into the landing. It runs that way. This ceiling is higher than that. So we're gonna angle the gas pipe up like that. They get it onto the flat roof. 
but let me show you the flat roof. The boilers, yeah, right underneath me here. So we can get a gas pipe up into here. That was the skylight that you just seen. So we can get it through at an angle. But then we go somewhere, get it above here. So you'd have to go up at an angle, up, across, down here, across there. Unless we take it onto next door's property, which we can't do. Can't really do that. System conversion is never straightforward. They really ain't. So I've had a word with the customer. They said they'd prefer it in the loft with the gas one because the gas one obviously can come straight out there, up the wall, then out up here. Uh, for the waste, got the saw pipe there. So we should come straight into there, which is a lot better. We've got flow return, hot and cold up there. Uh, we don't have to insulate the pipes, but I think it's going to be a lot better than messing about with trying to get a gas pipe all the way to the kitchen. Plus then, when they have the kitchen done, which I'm having all the kitchen done, there's no boiler to box in. They've got a lot more space in there. So yeah, I'm gonna stick this one in the loft. So this test done, we'll go up here. This is, ah, oh, it's not really. That's the gas pipe there. Cause some early boy electrics, brilliant. That's the gas pipe. So what I'm gonna do is cut it, cut it off, cause that's gonna be feeding the boiler only, cut it off and I'm going to angle my drill up and it should come above the flat roof there. Then we've got a way out there for our gas. See where that gas bulk come out. I see the gas ones at the moment. Oh. Park up. <laughs> Alright, here we are. Get the water out. Very nice. So now, we just come up, up the wall there. I think I've got to get my, my ladders up there. So that is where the flue is going, right on that gable end. You can see we've got no room here to get our ladders up. I can ask next door if we can uh, put the ladders on their roof, but I don't think they're going to be too happy with, you know, imagine if I put my ladders up and they get a leak on that roof and they say, well, you cause that. I don't want that aggro. So here's a way around that. We set up the, this is my mate's angle drill, the wall angle drill. I've used this a few times. Absolutely unreal. I'm gonna have to get myself because my core drill is knackered. I use a six inch core, then we're gonna use a flue snug that we haven't got to get up there then to seal it up. So, I've got the template on the wall, just cut around there where the flue snug's gonna go. So, we're just gonna get a big six inch hole through there now with the angle drill. Where's the angle drill? Oh, well, there it is. Absolutely. Under a minute to get through the outside hole. That's ridiculous, that is. Honestly, I called one the other day. It took me about 45 minutes. That thing is a beast. I love it. Can I have it? No. No. <laughs> All right, so we've been to get some flue stumps. So what we could do, we can actually fit the flue, but I have to see the outside. And this is it here. That's the flue stumps. And what you can do, you can actually bend it so it'll fit through the hole. Not a very good video because the light is reflecting off the farm, but Chris is going to push it through. So we've gone all the way through there, and he's just going to put it back without hitting him on the head. You just put it back now. Try to. Without dropping it, no pressure. There we go. And there we go. Then we just slide the flue through there now. Then we've got white one internal. And that's a six inch hole. And there we go. No, I've, made that. I've only got to make that words. <laughs> All plywood, all ready to go. Make sure you don't knock that because that is still live, believe it or not. Plywood is all in. So we've got the all through for the gas. So that's going to go straight into the back of the boiler. Blue snugs them in. So then we're ready to go through. Yeah, I'm just going to get the bracket on the wall. I'm going to crack on a bit because we have a bit behind. I'm just going to crack on with it, get the boiler on the wall, holes out, condensate over here somewhere, bring it through. So yeah, the plan is to get all the pipes into here. So second hour, just get up here with the pipe and pipe it up. So just so I'm in one place all day. So just up on the roof doing the gas. Um, we've got ladders up. Put a 90 on straight into the wall there. And you can see the flue snug up there. I can't get the angle any better other than that I'm going to fall off 
really tight up here. So condensate, finger begging straight into the air admittance. And we can put the air admittance up in the loft on 40 mil. I'll show you how we do that later. But I'm just gonna line it up here. I'm gonna take the condensate there as my guide. Just measure from there to there. So I can drill it inside to out somewhere up there. So from there to just about in line with there, it's 630. So if I go in the loft, measure 630 from the outflow pipe there, put a hole through, I should be able to come straight down into there, get that swapped out for an adapter, and go straight into that stack. Now, I suppose we could boss it. We could boss it there, but I don't really like bossing it when it's on a poop pipe. Because tissue, God knows what I can get onto it. So I don't really like doing that. We could come round. I'm going to here, but it'll look a mess coming round and into there. So I think we are just going to take that out and go straight to there and put an air admittance on there. Hello, right, mate. Yep. Spider man, you man. So yeah, she's going to finish up the gas one to there, and I'm going to go upstairs and finish off that. All right, you ready? I ain't walking round, so you're going to have to catch this. You ready? Yes. Get on, lad. Well done. <laughs> I'm going to keep going up and down, lad. So for the condensate, I said 6.30 from there to there. So we set up a big drill. I'm just going to go through now. 52 mil bit for the pipe snug. There we go. It's it all cord and the pipe snug through. So, yeah, just go put one on the outside now. I'm only thinking why they just put it up there and it comes straight across or just down at a slight angle now. I oh know it's only a little gap, but I want to keep as much internal as I can. That's all going to be lagged internal as well. So yeah, I just want to keep as much contact as I can internal. So on the end of day one, and this so far we've got, we've got the boiler in, the flue is in with the flue snugs. So now we can be ready to pipe up tomorrow. Got all the fittings ready in there. Uh, the filling loops there. I'm going to get my dust pan brush up tomorrow and just get this sweep out before we even start. Them electrics are going. We're going to use the immersion. I'll get the electrics off and we're going to put the fuse bay over there. Pipe work, that is ready to go. So, I'm going to use the flow here. We turn there, that flow there just goes to the boiler, so we don't need that. Hot water, that is ready to go because they've got mixer taps. I need to cap that off overnight, so we've left that. Condensate is in with the help of the flue snug. Sorry, the pipe snug, not the flue snug. So, that's going to come up and into there and then my pipes i'm going to put them all on this board and run them underneath yeah you'll see that tomorrow but that's not done too bad to be fair um all the outside work is done so the flue's in uh the contact's in the gas is done that's all done um just gonna test that then we can go yeah that's in day one so we're on day two and i've just got all my stuff into the loft go have a good clean out inside there i'm just gonna set up ready for the day because we're going to be piping it up today, which is my favourite bit. Because I get to take my time, one place all day, making it look presentable. So, let's have a quick tidy up, lay everything out and get to it. First thing I want to do is figure out how I'm getting the pipe work into the cupboard. So, I'm going to be using eco clips. The reason I'm going to be using these is the perfectly spaced for 19mm insulation. So, I'm going to put a base plate there, base plate here, and the pipe work can run across there. So we've got cold, we've got the hot, we've got the flow, then we've got to get the return from over there, so I'm going to bring them there. Cross the base plate's in, it comes with a right here clip, this is like a starter pack. So, I want 22 over this side, the flow, so what you do is push it in and twist, that's it, it's locked in. In, twist, that's it in. So I'll set everything up, I've got a light, fittings, soldering gear, got my soldering gears over there, clips, screws, pipe. First thing I'm going to do, I think, is make some stabs up. So, yeah, just bring some stabs down the wall and have a look, see how I'm going to lay everything out. Now, the fuse space over there, but the wire comes from over there, so what I can do is the electrics in there, I could put it up on the wall there. And across, I've got an EPH control to go in as well. So yeah, I'm just gonna make some stabs up. Then we can have a look where you want our clips and everything. So for the clips, I've just put the pipe in and I've pointed it away from the coupler of the clip, which is just below it. Now I'm gonna put standoff brackets on. That'll help with the insulation, but also 
safety filter when you want to isolate it, giving it a bit that little bit more space. Help you out when you're searching the boiler, so I'm just going to bang the clips in. So the clips, 200 mil from the bottom of the boiler, 200 mil from the floor. Just so I've got the same gap in. You don't need to go overkill. I don't, you know, three sets of clips on that would look overkill. So. so I've just opened the bags. There's no PRV. There's no washer pack. So I've just found the merchant. I said, oh yeah, we've got one here. Just come down and grab it. She's a bit of a pain because I've got to get to the merchants now. She's about 15, 20 minutes away. So that's going to cost me an hour. Okay, what I might do is get all the pot work into here and sacrifice my lunch break today, I suppose, because I've, they forgot to put it in. I feel better. that. Never mind. Never mind, these things happen. You just go adapt and overcome. So we'll just get the pot working. Um, I suppose I'll go back to the merchants and pick up the fitness pack. So we've got the return in. What we're going to do is put it about there. Then the T for the shock arrestor can come off here and the shock arrestor can go there. So I'm going to put that point back there. So I'll put space in brackets on so it makes it easier to get to the valves once it's in and piping up. There you go. Just get in there now. Put the pipe. Go in there. Nicely there. Get some new. Well, at least there's one in there. I need a new one for in there. Just get that. Okay. We have. Mm, that needs to just a little bit, but that's our starting point now. So we want everything there just to line up. So large scale reducer, shock arrestor can come in there. Um, the drain off of the flow can be in line with that. It just makes it look a lot, lot nicer. So the next one I just grabbed there, the bag was the hot. I was going to do the cold, but the length of pipe is perfect for the hot. So I'm just going to quickly cut it back and we can get the hot in. So, because I've used standoff brackets, it's sticking out the wall more. So you've got to put some off here. So what I've done is put the isolation valve on. I'm going to measure from the center of the isolation valve to the center of where it connects onto. Where that measurement is, take it off here and that should line up perfect. There we go. I could do the same for the cold now because the cold sounds hot. Just take 20 mil off my stab and get the cold straight in there. We turn it in, cold's in. So I had a thought with the expansion, I want to keep them too. There, elbow's going up there. We've got the eco clips in. We're going to insulate all that. All this is going to be insulated anyway. Um, so yeah, you don't really see it anyway, but I do like to keep my boiler installs nice and tidy. It's just our own personal pride, to be honest with you. I like to look back at the end job and think that looks a mint. Um, so, yeah, that's why I always try my best to make it look the best I can. Because when the, cust the customer is going to look, when they look at it and it's all nice in line, you know, they're going to think, wow, what a job. If you don't really take that much care, you leave all flux all over the place, customer going to think, well, that looks a bit blank. Then they're just going to think, oh, it's the boiler, it works. But... I always like to just take my time and make them look really nice. Let's take a look at fitting the back's internal loop. So, first thing you have is the two caps. So, let's just get the isolation cut. So, the fin loop already made. Just going to pop that on there. You know what, I've just thought, have I tightened that cold? I don't know. You want to make sure these two are some tight before you put the thin loop in. Let's have a look. Yeah, that one's tight. Yeah, it's tight. So now, I'm going to put the thin loop in. There we go, it's all tightened in now. Um, just the one pipe left, well, I've got the PR, PRV as well. 
but let's get the, the flow in. So that's it all near enough piped up now. But I said about the shock arrestor, I'm not thinking, if I put a tee on there, I can bring it up and put it there. Now, people might say that's a bit OTT, but it's going to all line up then. What do we think? I've just teed it off the cold there and brought it in the middle, so now all that's in line. A bit over the top. That is it all piped up. I think we're going to look at now the PRV and the condense. See, we're going to do that because I can't keep it against the wall. I'll have to kick it out, so I think I'm going to have to put a couple of 45s on that. PRV. A lot of people say they have problems with these, but it's supposed to be such a straightforward, easy design. You just get it, push it on, done. Yeah. That's PRV, done. Now, I don't like that it don't go all the way back. So if you bring, I've got to bring that down the wall, um, into my drain, so... Mm, that could do with being longer. You know, so that could do with being longer. I wish the tie backs about that. Get that stronger. But I'm guessing they've got that on a machine in the factory, preset to that length. So to change that, might cost them a fortune. I don't know. Um, going to say, yeah. That's at the back of there. You get this adapter, no more elbow that goes there. But if you want to bring that underneath, it's blocked in blocking this off. But normally, I'll bring it down to about there, then cross. I'll bring that down, but I might angle it out because it's going to be really busy here. So, the PRV, yeah, the PRV, I'm going to bring across to there into a hot torn into 22 mil into the waste because this has got the drain off on it there. So I want the PRV into a drain. So when you drain the boiler, it's going to drain into the drain. So the return, I've cut it down and shot a piece off. They can just join up there. So I've got to solve that now. It's right next, right next to the wood as well. Keep banging on about press, I'll do, I'm going to convert, but you wouldn't get pressed in there, would you? Well, you might with the angled jaws, but the weight on them is still about eight mils. At least they're burning the house down. <sighs> so, what I'm thinking now is what's stopping this boiler from coming on? Electrics. It's all popped up, so let's concentrate on the electrics. So, what we'll do is the old immersion and put that up here. So, we use EPH controls. So, we've got open firm on. So you just connect the old firm to there, lock the start, and then inside the battery too, there's old firm port. So, got the fuse spare on the wall, gun live, live neutral, connect the block in there for the earth, and then into the open firm, just next to that fuse spare. So, it's ever just wire it, just out the side, up, and it'll come into the boiler here. I'll put this back on the uh, cover, I'll put that down there. Come on, there we go, that goes under there. Uh, pretty easy, if you're going to use uh, 240 volts, you can just put it into there, comes out nice and easy, and live neutral earth, there you go, you can pull that out to wire it if you want, we're using open firm, so there it tells you which one to put it in, that's open firm, two red connectors there, and that is wired up, ready to go, I'll sneak them down the back of there, It's all wired up now, but it's about half past five. So I want to get the boiler up and running if I can. So they've got heating hot water, um, get some cleaning in there, get that running. So what I'm thinking is get the water on, get it filled up. And while it's running, try and get the condensed and the PRV done maybe. Let's see if we go. But yeah, let's get the water on. It's no leaks on the hot. See what happens on the heating. I've got no external gauge, so there it is. Strain off started leaking, so we're doing it's made the same section up. Try and snap it over. This still walking system, day training there. Well, there we go. Problem was, I didn't have that type of washer, so it's only took 10 minutes to do that. Though. Just drain it down quickly. Snatch it over, I'll have to paint that, but 
that's got me that crap. So yeah, I've got enough pressure in the ball in there to turn it on. Sorted that little leak out. So when you first turn on the back seat, power on, it'll come up. Initialization, the version number. There we go, the air. So that'll count down now. You can't bypass that, I don't think. Someone says you can, but just leave do this thing, leave the air. See the countdown time, that will all get all the way to there. That'll be the air. Look on site, we just put 45 in there. Gotta cut this out. Um, yeah, and just pause it up like that. So, hot ton. That's gonna go on there. Then bring it up, and the PRV are crossing in. The condensate then should go straight down into there. Then when you need to drain the boiler, of course, on the back seat, it's got the built-in drain off on there. It'll just drain straight into a drain, instead of splashing all the back wall outside. I've had to crack on a little bit here because time is at the essence. So, condensate, I'll just put a T in up there for the PRV into the hot ton. That goes around there. It's really busy over the left hand side with the new boxes. Um, Condensate comes down, straight down into the drain. And if we go the other side, through the wall, back to the wall, into the pipes. And now, I'm like thinking, why have I put that in? Well, I've got to put it now in admittance valve in because I'm going straight into the stack, top of the stack with that. No, put a new air admittance valve in here. That makes sense when I go outside because you've got to have the air admittance above the hoist drain. And now the hoist drain is near our boiler. So, yeah, air admittance valve in there. That should work nicely. It's what the air admittance valve looks like. It will fit 50, 40, 32. It's 32. You just pop that straight into 32. 40, that adapter goes on the top. You plonk that inside there. That's it. So I'm going to glue that up now. And that's the admittance valve done. It's on day three now. So last night, I've run out of time. I just needed to get it done, to get it on safely so the customer had heat, not water. Um, so I was just trying to get in and out. So I didn't record anything else last night, but we're back on day three. Um, I think start by taking the old boiler out we've already got cleaning in the system the heating's been on all night so we have magma cleansed this system and um, it's been drained about a million times near enough all the radiators replaced so not got too many concerns about the system water um, but we'll check that anyway so yeah let's get the old boiler decommissioned then we come back upstairs and commission a new one So it's solid, that's where the old flue hole was, just there. Now, I know it looks a mess, but that is render. I've got a big bag of render for a job. So I've tried to go over the holes when they paint it. So I'll have to paint this wall again, but it should blend in then. Because if I just go, if I just went around the hole, like, it would stick out. So yeah, just put some render around that and they can paint that. Condensate, I could take that out now, put a bit of render in that hole, yeah. So there you go, that's the old flood. Now, as I said, go over the hole just to try and blend it in. So when it's painted, it does stick out like a sore form. Yeah, when they paint that wall, hopefully that should all blend in. Well, nothing was there. Here's the air emittance valve, so I'm just going to chop that off. Get that into there. there you go. Okay. Shamper that off. We see that to begin the use a cow point one. Put a bit of 40 mil in there and that will just fit into the top. Like that. Then we can connect it up. I think that's three 45s. That's going to get some. But it's three 45 into there, you get the gist. Can I help it? So, cleaned it all out, cleaned up all the pipes, and this is how it finished off. You can see, I just like to keep everything in line, even the filter, um, just put a screw on the wall for the canning start. I've had the clean on. Yes, I haven't recorded a lot of stuff because I just want to get in there and get it done at the moment. Um, I've still got to commission it all, lag it, I've got all that lagging to put on. That's where the e car clips come into play because the spacing on them would be perfect for the 19mm installation. So, what we're going to do now, um, I've got to get the in between, get the in between, get it whizzed round, and we're going to commission it now. I'll show you how to put this into commissioning mode. 
Once you've gone through initialization, what you want to do, back button and reset, press and hold. We'll come up with L. L is low fire. Turn the hot water knob once. H, little H, is heating. Turn it again, big H is hot water. So we can put that into commission mode. Do the low readings, do the high readings. You do your gas test point from there. He's standing in working pressures. So yeah, I'm just going to do flue gas analyzer, get this commissioned, get my probes on here, do the temper temperature differential between hot, cold, flow and return. And that should it be all done. I should give you a wipe off as well. Now I've got to pack all these pipes up to here. Got test point onto the gas valve. We'll pull it on low, and these are the readings we're getting on low. So what we're going to do now is test that on maximum rate. Then we go down, do gas rate, see what we get. Yeah, so we'll put the standing. Well, the working, sorry. Not standing. 17.2. So we'll go down and check that at the meter as well. So I'm just going to do a flue integrity now. I'm going to move that down. So I'm going to move that down, do a flue integrity, check that. I have just pulled it off the maximum, so it's just settling. Um, but that's around, that keeps going hovering to be honest with you, it was higher than that, it was up to 18. We'll be 17.6 on the working downstairs of the meter, it was 19. That's what we can do now, undo that and just put some bubbles on it. So, flu integrity was all fine. We've got it on a little H now for the heating because we want to do a kilowatt rating on the heating. So, we've just done it on the hot water, but the kilowatt rating on the heating is different. So, put it to little H, go and do a second kilowatt rating, make sure all that's okay. And um, we're going to get the probes on as well, just to do the temperature temperature differential. On the flow and return um, to the hot water, just want to check it out the outlets. We have got the temperature probe, and that will fit into. So we can check that at the outlet in a minute once this is completed. Hot tone, drain off, shock arrestor, long scale reducer, filter all in line. Might be being a bit pompous with the sticker. Let me know in the comments. You've got a little hooker there, filter on. Finished off with the trunk in here and the pipe snug. Yeah, finished it off really nice.